everybody. Hope you are doing well. Y'all showed up just in time. Look at that. We are just about the point where we're going to put salt into the kiln. We have uh, the front of the kiln uh, has been about uh, topped out at maybe 2370, 2380 Fahrenheit. The back is currently right around 2260. Um, but our cone 10 and 11 are almost down in the top and the back, and that's when we're going to introduce the salt. So that's what we're working on. And Drew, if you want to go grab the shield and then the, uh, uh, and then the sheet metal. Actually, let's look at those combs in the top of the back before you go. Macy, we're going to have to get rid of your shoes. Don't step on her. <laughs> She's going to get out of the Princess. Yeah. I love it. Pottery Princess. Pottery Princess. Pottery Princess. Pottery Princess. Pottery there's more space over there. Sure. All right, we, like I said, we are getting ready to uh, uh, do salting on, in the kiln here in probably the next uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, so I've got just a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, uh, I can answer those. But like I said, just to reiterate, we're about 2360, it looks like, in the front. Uh, in 2272 Fahrenheit in the back um, I just tried to look at the cones in the back I know that the 10 and 11 are down in the bottom in the back so I have cones top and bottom in the three different stacks uh, cone 12 is already down in the top and bottom of the middle stack uh, we're just working on the back now get that get that uh, cone down before we put the salt in and then after we salt we will be firing for a full hour after that what does the salting do? The salt, uh, this, it's hot enough in there that the sodium and the chlorine uh, separate. The sodium attaches to the silica that's in the clay and creates the uh, like textured glaze that you see on salt-fired pottery. Uh, or if it's a lighter amount of salt, it can just create a, a sheen on the pieces. Um, then uh, the chlorine goes out as a, as a gas. So. Thank you so much for the well wishes, everybody. How was it? Oh, yeah. Here we go. We get Andrew. So here, here's an example of a piece that was raw clay on the outside. And you can see the difference in texture just from one side to the other. This has the heavier salt texture right here. And on the back side, uh, so this would have been facing the front of the kiln right here where it got most of the salt and wood ash. And then the back side has just the sheen on it without much, as much of a texture. Um, and then the inside of that was glazed with just the white glaze. So we've been on a rhythm of stoking, basically the front, we're kind of just holding at a temperature range. It's been going from about, we're stoking at around 2330, it'll drop down to maybe 2315 and go all the way up to 2360 or 2370, uh, just kind of all in that range. Um, and then uh, the back has been staying steady right around 2250 to 2270. Um,
they're good. Twelve is soft enough here in the top, and the other two are protection, so we'll be good to solve here pretty soon. Somebody says hi to you, Aaron. Oh, oh. I don't know. Uh, Harry Kuykendall. You can see his name up here if you want to. You can come say hi if you want. Fan club. Uh, does that mean you use different types of glazes for wood firing? Um, you can, or you can just anything that's high uh, high temperature. Uh, some glazes get bleached out more from the salt that you put in or from the wood ashes, so you have to be careful about that. They definitely will not be the same color as if you electric or gas fire them. Uh, there's no reds in this kiln because the copper red does not work in this atmosphere, uh, but these pieces will be for sale in person uh, July 16th and 17th and the 23rd here at my place, and then online sale the 29th and the week pretty much following the 29th. Um, we'll be doing an online sale of these pieces that are being fired and finished off today. We'll unload the kiln on Tuesday, and I will do a live stream of the unloading as well. So pretty much going to do this front stoke. I'll have Aaron do a side stoke on this side. And then after that, we're going to uh, get set up to put salt in the front of the kiln. Uh, we're probably going to put about... A total of between 30 and 40 pounds of salt in the kiln. Uh, we'll put the majority of that in this front stoke hole probably between two different uh, salting, uh, uh, two different times, and then we'll also pour some salt on boards and introduce it into the middle of the kiln. You're welcome. Where am I from? Well, we live in North Carolina. I'm assuming that's what you mean. North Carolina, United States. I'm originally from New York, but I, I'm assuming that's not what you meant. <laughs> How much wood do you think you use for this firing? I believe you mentioned before. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, I get that question a lot. Um, probably. I'm two quarts of bargain, two quarts of. Oh. You think so? I bet you're close. Okay. Somebody that maybe knows better than me about mounts of wood says maybe two quarts of hardwood and close to two quarts of pine. There you go. I would have guessed more like one of each, but. I just know based on how big my stack of wood needs to be, how much I use because of how firing this, uh, this is the eighth firing. So I kind of have a good idea based on that. Go ahead, Aaron. All right, for salting, we're gonna have, um, You can pour salt in for me. I can. We just need to get a uh, some kind of a scoop. There's those glass uh, measuring cups in there. Um, uh oh. Uh, Jimmy, we'll have you. Um, we'll have you bring that uh, sheet metal up and kind of lay it against the bottom of the door to block those. Not right now, but when you get ready to salt, it's all going to kind of work. You know. Uh, we're kind of going to all work at one time, so uh, you, actually, Jimmy, you can open the door uh, and then put that well, put that sheet metal in front of there and then open the door and then Aaron's going to come in with that shield and put it over the front because that shield covers the opening other than about four or five inches at the bottom. Then uh, Andrew and I will walk up with this and, and blow the salt in. When we're done, uh, we'll back up and then you can do a stoke uh, in the front. And then we'll move the sheet metal onto each step. That worked? You got the shield? You will have the shield. You're salting with me. You're doing the you're opening the door and putting the uh, sheet metal in place. Everybody know what they're doing? Oh, well, yeah, you can move it after he's done stoking. Yes, he always forgets that. <laughs> you can go ahead and mug this up in the first uh
Uh, it just has a, a big, a big hole at the front of it, and then I use that to make sure. Uh, yeah, just just lays against the front. It doesn't have to be flat against the knee there, as long as it's just up there. It shield our legs from all that heat and we'll be standing there for yeah. a minute and a half. I did try that out make sure it works. But oh yeah, is it plugged in? It is plugged in. Okay. Okay. You, uh, after you put that down and open the door, if you use this and make sure to push the wood out of the way that's there. And you got three jobs. Yeah. Alright, go ahead with your seat metal. There you go. Yeah. Pull it out of the way. Alright. Uh, Aaron coming behind you. Yeah, Sally, it is hard to believe this is number eight. You have been here the whole time. I'm just upset you wouldn't let me send you another apple pie for two when you broke yours. That was probably from wood firing number one. She's in Bahamas, I think. Wow. She need visitors? <laughs> Somewhere tropical, is it right? Is Bahamas, Bermuda? I can't remember. Come on, pretty Bahamas. I know that. <laughs> Bermuda, Bermuda, Bahamas. Okay. <laughs> How many pieces do we fire? Um, this kiln holds anywhere from about 600 to 800 pieces, depending on. Jamaica. I oh, Jamaica. I got it wrong. We just had friends go on a honeymoon there. Jamaica. I yeah. almost went with them, but that wasn't. It was number awesome. one in Jamaica. <laughs> Sorry, Sally. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, I have gas kiln as well. I kind of prefer firing with wood, but uh, you, there are certain things you can do in gas that you can't do in wood, certain things you can do in wood that you can't do in gas. Same with electric, so. All right, let's see. I have more chairs if you guys want to sit. Okay. We should make that. Bring your own chair thing. Like, that should be good. Uh, how hot does it get? Well, out here it's pretty warm, but I'm assuming you mean inside the kiln. Uh, about top temperature in the front was like 2380, in the back about 2280. Oh, Harry, you're welcome. Thanks for visiting. No problem, on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Therese, you dead? Yeah, I'm on. That's a good movie. That's an old one. You actually didn't, your dad met the coach or the team? The guy who drove the, was it the bobsled guy? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I met one of the real life people. The real life guy. Not the actors. It was actually when they were in Jamaica at the airport. Yeah, yeah, the bobsled guy. Uh, how many people does it take to help with a firing? Uh, at least probably five others other than myself. This firing, we had probably more like eight others other than myself. Um, so, yeah, the idea of blowing, using the salt, a uh, blower for the salt, it's not my idea, but it's definitely a great way to introduce a more amount of salt, a larger amount of salt in a, in a shorter amount of time. Um, if you still have an apple pie, number one, I will buy it. I do no. not. Those are gone. Um, Jimmy has one. <laughs> It was fired in number one and in number a, five. You could auction it. Yeah, I had to refire it. <laughs> Tell him he'll auction it. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy might auction it off to you. All the kids got one. So when it hits 2330 again, go ahead and soak again. Uh, Aaron, if you want to find uh, two wider boards and pull them out, and we'll do one up top and one down below, we'll pour salt on them. Yeah, you can go ahead and set one up on each side, yeah. Probably put a little water on them, it helps it stick. So we take wider boards that are like two by three pine strips, uh, lay them out, put a little bit of water on them, and then we pour salt on that, it helps it stick to the board. Um, and then we slide those in to the top stoking hole, which is right about there, and then also in the bottom, which is right about there. Um, sorry for YouTube and Instagram. There we go, those two spots. Yeah. Let me get a measuring cup. I'll look around, Sally. If I happen to come ac uh, stumble across one, I'll let you know.
Uh, no, just just top and bottom of the middle or the first on the front. Don't put any in the back. So uh, you can see Aaron will be putting boards in the side over here uh, with salt on them. You guys can watch right down here. So Aaron's going to put one just to introduce salt in the back of the kiln. These boards have a uh, salt board on them and then she's going to slide one in up there on the stoking shelf. And then... Oh, no, no, I meant one in the bottom stoke hole. Well, it's not a stoke hole, but yeah. Just don't set that face down. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, don't do it yet because you just put hers in there. Sorry, right, just leave it out until it burns a little. It'll be alright. Hello from Sweden. Good, I'm glad to be an inspiration. Thank you so much. Uh, is your clay rated higher than cone 10 or is it just a typical cone 10 clay? No, the clay I use is like a 10 to 12 clay uh, because this kiln is anywhere from 13, maybe 14 in the front to 11 in the top and the back. Do you actually calculate how much salt you use or is it just trial and error? Um, kind of yes to both. Um, we have 50 pound bags and I've been doing about 50 pounds of salt, uh, but last time I think I used a little bit too much, um, but also could have been where I put the salt by putting the salt in the very back. I put my Rutil Blue glaze in the very back of the kiln um, because it gets less salt back there, but last firing I put, uh, and you can go when it hits 2330 by the way. It's, if it's not there yet, don't go, but I'm saying. Um, the uh, last time put salt in the back stoke hole on the side and it bleached out most of the rutile blue and made it brown, so. It's all right, you can just hold it. Charity, show me stack. Uh, we'll do the other side first. We probably will do another round on each side. Well, it is Saturday. Oh, 
We're going to, uh, Andrew's about to put uh, salted boards in on that side, which are basically boards that we've just uh, poured a little bit of water on and then salt on, and we're introducing those into the middle uh, of the kiln, the first stoke hole on the side, so that we can introduce some salt to the back of the kiln, or the middle to the back of the kiln. What's the rest of the process after we're done salting? Pretty much we have to fire for a full hour after finishing the salting so that we can get all the excess salt burned out of the kiln. So the atmosphere is clean, also remelt all the glazes if they've cooled down from introducing all the air uh, and salt into the kiln. Uh, and by clearing out that atmosphere, all the glazes that need to be shiny or should be shiny can, like I said, remelt and clear out the atmosphere. Uh, and then we, uh, then we open, after that hour, we open most of the porthole, all the portholes on the kiln, let it crash cool down to about 1500 degrees, and then we close everything off and it cools slower from there. Um, crash cooling allows, uh, iron crystallizes between 1700 and 1500 degrees, and so we crash cool so that the irons and the clay and some of the glazes don't crystallize as much, uh, because if they do, you'll get more muddy, matte looking glazes and I like most of my stuff to be somewhat shiny. So, so good. yeah, go ahead. And then we'll, after that, we'll do front softening. Shoot me an email or text or something. I will. I might have some more questions for you. Right. That's good. Yeah. Hey, you take That's it. always the case. Thanks right? again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. It. Nice to meet you. Uh, what kiln does the temperature need to be at to vaporize the salt? I'm not a chemist, 
so I'm not 100% sure. I know it does at this temperature, so I'll say that. <laughs> Any chemists around that know what temperature salt chemically separates and vaporizes it? All right. Pretty hot. Sorry. Yeah, pretty hot. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so how much how much square footage do you have inside the kiln? Uh, I think I figured out I have about 150 square feet of stacking space. I think that's what I figured out. I, that was my guesstimate, I think, while I was building it. Because it was easy to calculate the straight wall because that's, you know, all square or rectangle. But the arch, I kind of guesstimated on. There is, there is a formula for that, but... I'm also not a uh, geometry. Yeah, I'm also not a mathematician. <laughs> How old's the kiln? Uh, about two. I finished it uh, October of tw or yeah, October of 2019. So two and a half years. And what's the life expectancy of a kiln these days? I mean, I uh, it really just depends on. It. It's more about how many firings, probably than years, of course. Right. But and how you treat uh, it, maybe. Usually after so many firings, you can sandblast the inside to kind of freshen up the inside and get rid of some of the residual salt and gunk that drips down. Yeah. Uh, depending on the style of kiln, sometimes people have to rebuild the firebox because that gets more beat up than anything. Yeah. Um, so. so salt's melting point is 800.8 degrees. All right, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Salt melting temperature is 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But. Boiling point is 2,669 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. That's hot. This temperature know. turns to a vapor. All right, there you go. 2,600 degrees is the boiling point of salt, turns to a vapor. So we're pretty close to that. I'll go ahead and load that here. We've got uh, 
Uh, doesn't the salt firing put a lot of wear and tear on the furniture and brick? Yes, it does. I coated the brick inside the kiln before we ever fired the first time with uh, a, 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 a thin coating of like silica and clay, create like a glaze on the inside of the kiln to help protect the brick from the salt. So that definitely helps. Quality wise. Yeah, man. I talked called you about two weeks ago. We we're coming down for to, for the weekend. Oh yeah. Greg, where we talked yeah. to him. He said, he said Saturday would be the day. Yeah, it's <laughs> the most exciting uh, part yeah. of the process for sure. Um, yes. And I guess you burn enough that. Uh, oh, so this is how you put it in on the side there. Yeah, we we put some salt in the side. I mean, we always stoke the sides uh, throughout through the last day of firing to help bring the temperature up in the back you of the kiln. Just slide that whole thing in, and then yeah. you would dump it, or no, or just, just let, let it burn, it burn off. off. Yeah, because yeah. the wood burns up yep. and the salt. The wood will burn so yeah. hot. Yeah. Um, is it time? Yeah, you can do a little bit lighter stuff. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. If you're worried about the ember file, it is. Um, as long as you can put them in, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, then we need to burn it up, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's very cold again. Yeah, just. Yep. Yeah, the smaller pieces will probably do fine because it'll help burn up quicker. It doesn't necessarily hurt anything because all that's going to burn down. It won't even fill up my wheelbarrow when, when we unload it. All that just kind of like cool it gets down to like that. I'll take it. Yeah, but the danger is if you get too big, it'll fill up. Yeah, it looks like a regular, you know, gas can, right? Or you can just put a board in and close the lid. Take it out a couple days. Thankfully, most of them aren't going to have any pots unless there's a little bit of wi-fi slid in there far. That's pretty cool, yeah. I don't have to kill me. I have part of the wheel during COVID, but it's still fire. These are beautiful. Thank you. I'm Cindy. Go with that guy. I love the paint on the wall. Oh, the, yeah, the little peacock on the sweater bowl. Yeah, you got to kind of yeah, those are just more than right. Yeah, yeah, my eyes were inside with those dots. Plenty different places in my eyes. Not plenty. Yeah, I, I really don't think. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're tedious, but they're stuck on the same. I put the crystals in the center, too, right? I put just a cup of glass in the bottom. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, right outside. Sorry, it's only six. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours. That's right, yeah. So you know, Matt, you're just down here for the yeah, weekend? Yeah, I've been the Yeah. I helped the last one. Yeah. 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 So is there a shelf going all the way across there? That she's... I, uh, when I'm stacking the kiln, I build in a shelf that sticks out. So you can slide that in. So you can in. slide in, yeah. Line it up, right? you got to line it up just right. I try to get it about level with where that opening is. So it's not the board's in. Perfectly level, but yeah, yeah level one up. Better to be level or down a little. If it's up, it's kind of, you know, you got it. Yeah, easier to drop it in if it's down. It's only this big. Yeah. <laughs> it's only about that big, right? Yeah, the stoking shelves are usually only about five inches wide. Yeah. 
just enough and, and I built it into the stack of bricks so it's part of the support of the shell uh, structure uh, and so it's not going anywhere because it's built in and it's got you know a couple hundred pounds of weight on top of it you know, it's not I used to go to Glen Echo, which is a national park. They have a gas can, I mean, it's a wood stone. That's why I did some hard here, and that's a you know, strong town or whatever. They just don't buy it. It's kind of like, you know, like, you need a bottle, I need a bottle. Exactly. Like, you know, like, I don't want that, that, you know. And, and so this other studio, they've got more features, more fire more often, it's just bigger, more stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just more stuff. Yeah. Like, keep it for now. The longer I keep it, the luckier it gets, right? I do a lot of that anymore, but now I'm kind of like, I take a class. You might have any questions? Where is John the Pottery? You mean John the Potter, I know. Uh, he's in Minnesota, as far as I know. He might uh, He might be back this fall. We'll see. We're talking about it. It's usually about 40 uh, hours. That's too far to drive for, I think. But yeah, you set the fire for like the first yeah. five yeah. or six, yeah. and then you just, just let it do its thing. No, you just keep going. Um, the whole 40 time. hours, yeah. you just keep feeling it. Like, oh, you just pour off there, right? So, no. like, but I like having a community, you know, to keep it. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, they start out Thursday evening. Clay blazes. Yeah, that's when we start the shifts. So we're like six-hour shifts. Six hour shifts. Okay, so somebody's here from the tour. Yeah. All night, yeah. Thursday night, yeah. and there's like 6 a.m. Yeah. to noon, noon to 6, 6 to, mid, or 6 to midnight, midnight to 6. Okay. So, so you guys are all, rebel, like, so all friends in the community, and you help each other, uh, each other. Most, well, yeah. most everybody's actually not from Seagrove. <laughs> <That's laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Winston-Salem, which is 45 minutes away, an hour away. Uh, Y'all are an hour away. Hannah's from Ohio, Mike's from Michigan, I mean, uh, Ohio, and Kentucky, yeah. so, yeah. all over. Yeah. yeah, I'm the only one from Seagrove. I'm surprised you don't have any tents set awesome. up in your backyard here. Yeah. We're trying to figure that Tent out. Tent city. Yeah. We're trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the good thing is there's a couple, there's a couple bed and breakfasts in Seagrove. So. Outdoor shower. We got an Airbnb uh, just down the road. There's, there's a little Airbnb right down the road. The Potter's Rest. Yeah. That's when you got? Yeah. yeah. You must have beat me to it. I know the people that own it. Yeah. yeah. How long ago did you put that? Not that long ago. I mean, like, I'm so last minute. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Not that long ago, but because apparently this is not like this is like a slow season for you guys. It's not, yeah, it's not a busy season right now. For uh, fall, it's a busy season. Yeah. Spring and then fall. Holiday. Everybody wants to go do their holiday shopping. So Changing the colors. So it's good well. Well, they have some on the front shelf. Yeah, yeah, right down there. They have the music tonight. I always get here. Okay. I want to do it. My senior in high school. I don't think I have the other one. It's just for art, for I know there's public money yeah. out there from the arts. Where we should look for our first down to the store. Or in Maryland, as I need to see. Yeah. They don't have so many requirements. I know in Virginia, like BCU, has Virginia's concentrated in the South Park program at BCU. So if you could look anywhere in the Eastern South Park. Yeah. UNC Asheville, Maryland, Virginia, 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 Virginia,
Uh, yeah, and it's so just wonderful. Wonderful. It's so accessible and like it's just super easy. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. 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 I got it. Yeah. I got it. 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 I I'm raking some of the embers so that we can uh, kind of get better uh, surface area for all the wood to burn as well as uh, rake out some of the embers to create space.
Sorry if I missed it, but wood, it, with anything else added, we oh, yeah. just finished putting salt in the kiln. So it is a salt-fired kiln. We added about 40 pounds of salt to the kiln total. Um, yeah, just so everybody knows, I will be doing an unloading uh, live stream as well. That'll be Tuesday morning, probably about 9.30 or 10 o'clock Tuesday morning. Oh, I worked John the Potter too hard. He's not coming back. No, he just has a lot of responsibility. Three coffee shops, three kids. Pottery. Three kids, three coffee shops, I should say. Uh, pottery shop. Who knows what else? He's probably bought a small island by now. Um, um, two or three hotels. Yeah, he's probably started a, a, a TikTok cooking show, uh, you know, cooking with John. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with John. I'm your host, John Schmidt. <laughs> so, yeah. If not, somebody tell him, hey, you got to go watch the replay at timestamp 53 minutes. Somebody will do it. Anyway, so we have finished introducing all the salt. Uh, now we fire going to fire for a full hour uh, to uh, clear the atmosphere of any excess salt, bring the temperature back up if it has dropped in any parts of the kiln to make sure all the glazes are fully melted. Any ash that's in the atmosphere, you want to make sure it, it all gets melted. Uh, and uh, we never really dropped severely even adding salt to the kiln so we've been pretty good temperature but just to, mainly to clear out any excess salt throughout the entire kiln um, that's mainly what we're doing now do you use cones to keep track of the temperature or uh, we use you... cones to know when everything's mature but now we're just going to go by the air temperature as far as keeping it in a range so where it's... measure the air temperature on the way out I guess uh, no it's in the top of the kiln so there's two barometers, one near the front, one near the back. And so those are inside of a ceramic sheath inside the kiln. And so it's just measuring the air temperature in the top. Yep. You can actually see in the top of the kiln where the wires kind of come, come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's five openings in the top. I use two of them for barometers, and the other three are kind of like low holes to uh, kind of gauge atmosphere and things like that. We can also sidestep a few times too. You okay. Oh, okay. You got side steps before you go up front. Okay. I'll do it. Not that I've learned. Yeah, you can do the front row. So you're like the company on each. Probably just do like one up, one down, and you call. Okay. My turn. Uh, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, 
Jimmy had the best dad joke. He said, what do you do with a chemist when he dies? You bury him. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, Sally, thanks for showing up. Good to see you, talk to you. The current temperature is 22.35 and 22.27, uh, but I believe, is that what I saw? But it's climbing. It's been about 2360 to 2370 in the front. Uh, the back has been up to 2270, probably 2272, maybe. like to try it but I'd have to have a separate kiln now sure. oh yeah I could convert my electric kiln that that'd probably be better use of that kiln than uh, crystal a little soda kiln yeah. sorry I'm shaking the camera but I'm just trying to disconnect my excess power cord to get them out of the way it does give a different look oh yeah I like soda that's why I love Ron Philbeck stuff did you use high temperature wiring to wire your lighting fixture above the kiln? No, I didn't. Those are just uh, electrical staples. <laughs> but I have been planning to move the ones that are on this side down there. I've been planning to move them, kind of take them to save with that and taper them away from the kiln. It really only gets too hot for those in the very back, but they haven't failed yet, and they've been up there for two and a half years, so if I end up having to replace them, it'll be okay. Uh, what 
key do you use on a banana? A monkey. We started the dad joke. anybody have any more questions we'll probably wrap it up here soon because it's going to be pretty repetitive from here on out just uh opening the front there putting wood in putting wood in one side or the other but like i said we will be back tuesday morning for the unloading don't melt <laughs> thanks joe i like your work by the way joe joe sink do you know him oh yeah I mean, I don't know him personally. I just know his work. No, he's very, very nice. Aaron says you're very nice. I've, I've only talked to him on Instagram. He's okay. Still super sweet. <laughs> and he used to live like right down the road. Yeah, I thought he was over that way. Yeah. Yeah, he just moved in his home. Oh. But yeah, he was like, I could walk to his house. Cool. Yeah. You just fired yours yesterday. It was stinking hot. Yes. Uh, it was hotter yesterday than today. Last night was like a dream for a late night firing. The rainstorm, the 70, or, you know, 70 some degree weather. For summer, that is. I'd rather fire in the winter for every firing. It's just not feasible. Me too. But yeah, we just finished salting and we uh, are gonna fire our, for our full hour after salting. And then we're gonna crash cool. Uh, do you crash cool your kiln, Joe? Like I said, if anybody else has any questions or comments, feel free to throw them in there now. Uh, and I will, when I do live stream on Tuesday, the unloading, I will plan to do uh, YouTube and Instagram again for live streams. So, but I will post about it on Instagram uh, and it automatically goes to Facebook. So, so we will crash cool the kiln um, after this full hour of firing. Yes, you did. You just went, didn't you? Oh, no. okay. Yeah, you'll be up here in a second. You got to load Tuesday? Yeah. What time do you know yet? Like 9, 10 o'clock. Okay. He's going to go again. No, it's fine. It's not that critical. It just helps get the temperature up in the back again. I see a darn thing in there. Very high. Oh, Mark, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here.
I hope sometime you can make a sectional drawing of your kiln to show how the air is flowing. Well, if I knew how the air was flowing, it changes every single time. Uh, but I know what you're saying. Like, it's pretty simple in this kiln. Uh, of course, depending on how you stack the, the pots and the shelves, it's going to change the direction of the flow. But cross draft kilns are very simple. You have a firebox at this end, you have the wear chamber, and then you have a chimney at the other end. So it pretty much just starts here, goes straight through the kiln into the chimney and up. It's not like a lot of kilns where it goes kind of up and down and multiple chambers, it goes up and down, all those kind of things. Cross-draft cross kilns are really very simple in that sense, that it's very directional um, and not that much complication to that. You still have the complication of firing based on trying to get the temperature where you want it at certain parts of the kiln, and that can be based on how you stack it, um, active and passive dampers, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's very, very straightforward as to the way the air flows through the kiln. Turner. I have heard the name. I don't know him personally. Uh, is the height of your chimney dictated by the measurements in your kiln design? I'm sure a kiln master, a kiln building master could tell you and there are certain parameters that you do want to follow. I patterned my kiln after a kiln uh, of another potter in the mountains of North Carolina, so I kind of just borrowed his, somewhat his dimensions to build mine. Um, the biggest key is that you don't want it too small. If you build your chimney too big, you can always cut it down with dampers. If you build it too small, you can't make it bigger. So if you're going to err, err on the side of a bigger chimney than a smaller one, and then you can use dampers to cut down the volume of the chimney. So, 
I mean, yes, there is an ideal size. Good morning from New Zealand. Yes, I will. Good question and good morning. You are like 17 hours ahead of us, right? So that's like a day minus four hours. I mean, a day minus seven hours. That means it's early. But seven hours behind us, but tomorrow? That's four in the morning. Am I right? Is it for is it for 11 a.m.? Hello from India as well. Hello. Uh, he's up there in age. Me too. But I think he had a copper red glaze that he used in salt fire. Wow, that's pretty amazing. It's 3:10 a.m. I was close. That's either really early or really late. There's no in between there. Either you've been up a long time or you got up really early. Well, I guess you don't have to be up a long time, you're just up late. You getting ready to stop stuck? So you guys, if you're, let's see, just a shout out for anybody who's here. On Instagram, we have Aaron E. Pottery. Um, we have Mike Mustaine who's here. Do you have an Instagram? Yeah. What is it? Do you Mike know? Mustaine. Mike Mustaine. M U S T A I N. Yeah. We have Hannah doesn't really do Instagram. Andrew doesn't do Instagram. Uh, DJ is cvpots.com, I believe. DJ Harry. Huh? Or CV Pottery. Yeah. Uh, something vessel. Chosen vessel, Chosen yeah. Vessel. Um, Allison is A. Daniel. Oh yeah, yeah. Allison Daniel is A. A. Daniel. A. Daniel. Pottery, I think. Pottery, okay. Yeah, She's not here at the moment, but yeah. she. these are all the people that have helped out with this firing. So uh, you can go check all of those people out Amanda on Instagram. Your name. <laughs> Amanda's <laughs> not a potter, right? She's like, you don't have to follow me on Instagram. Now she's a wood fire potter. She's a wood fire potter. She is now. Um, and Jimmy and Annette have been here helping. They're not potters, but they're pottery enthusiasts. I don't know why they do it. And like marathon runners and wow. gluttons for punishment, I guess. <laughs> they love to sweat. <laughs> Perks treats. Yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And Seth he, helps he, with Seth. overnight. Seth He's not a potter it. either, but... Shout out to Seth. He's been helping me the longest of anybody. Yep. I think every firing except, well, he wasn't here for he just had a, a newborn hip surgery. Oh, sorry. Seth and I are tied. Yep. Because I've only missed one. Yep. He's missed two now. Oh, the first well, one. The baby. And, yeah, the baby. I don't know if he helped with the first one or not. He missed Actually, he helped right after the baby. He didn't help for his hip, after his hip, hip surgery. Place. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's anyway, right. sorry. Y'all didn't need to know all that. <laughs> Uh, how much wood to use in firing the kiln your size? Greetings from the Netherlands. Uh, probably around two cords of hardwood and two cords of pine, thereabouts. I don't really measure it that way, I just know how big my stack of wood needs to be to uh, achieve the firing, to finish it off and have enough. I will always, if it's in my control, have more than I need because I have. Uh, if I'm worried about anything, it's running out of wood or not having enough pots. Those two things. We wood like kiln trees. humans are the best kind of humans. Yes, yes, I that's agree. that's coming from Australia. I mean, or, or uh, New Zealand. I think it's a piece of wood. Or is it? No, it's a piece of foam. She's like, you took my toy. <laughs> All right, Macy, come here. You want to say bye to the camera? Yep. Come here. Come here. Pottery puppy. Princess Pottery princess puppy. We'll get ready to sign off. Macy can say bye. Yes. Say bye. Macy Look, over Instagram. here. Yeah. Yeah, Macy doesn't have an Instagram yet. Puppies of Instagram. You want to say bye? All right, thank you guys all for being here. Like I said, we will be uh, live streaming uh, Tuesday morning for the unloading. Uh, on Instagram and YouTube, but I'll, I'll post about that uh, what time uh, here in another couple days. Uh, hi from New Zealand. I have a farm in Limitless Wood. What wow. would it cost to set up a wood fire kiln? 
Well, it depends on how big it is, uh, but you could probably, if you were buying all brand new material, you could bank on, at least here in the U.S., you could bank on a minimum of probably $20,000. This one maybe, including kiln furniture, I had $10,000 just in kiln furniture. So more like thirty, forty thousand dollars between shed, kiln, furniture. So, but that's here. So who knows? And I, but I, it didn't. Some of the material I got was secondhand or uh, you know in barter. So anyway, yeah, yeah mentally convert currency. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that for you. So all right, thank you all. We'll see you Tuesday morning for the unloading if you can make it. And uh, like I said, in person. Uh, kiln opening sale July 16th and 17th and the 23rd, 10 to 5 each day. Online sale starting July 29th. Uh, you can check my website and Instagram, Facebook for all the information coming forth for that. All right. You guys have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.